Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Closed and covered in water, a major mess on Detroit's west side after a driver topples a fire hydrant and floods the area. Now the rush is on to get the water cleared out, of course, before everything freezes. But first, we are entering a second night of dangerously cold weather. We sure are. And while the wind chill morning is over, that doesn't mean that there isn't still a threat. In fact, it will feel like negative 15 in many parts of Metro Detroit tonight. Right now in Washtenaw County, we take a live look out over the big house. Feels like Oof. Feels like 10 below right now for anyone out and about walking around. We move to Wayne County, a few degrees warmer. Heck, balmy, only six below in Detroit right now. Now, despite these cold times, some people are still working outside today, like the crews doing upgrades to the Detroit People Mover. According to the Detroit Transportation Corporation, every week for the next seven weeks, crews will be making improvements to the People Mover stations to hopefully help you get around. So for those who do have to work outside right now, let's get start things off here at 6 with forewarn meteorologist Kim Adams for a look at what we can expect. And Kim, what about the kids heading to the bus stop tomorrow? My kids will not stop texting me right now. Keep asking mm. for Is updates. It closed? Right. No, it's, no, it's still open. For there, for no, them. I mean, but they think you have some kind of. Yeah, they think yes. I can insight. somehow do this. Yes. Right, I very was. powerful. Oh, I, <laughs> see, I know. Uh, my kids say, "Did you tell them? Did you tell them how cold it's going to be?" Yes, I did. Yeah. I don't make those decisions. Five above zero feels like nine at the bus stop. Nine below zero, and then seven. So this is why a lot of the schools are closing because kids have to walk. They have to be out at the bus stop, and it's a very short window of time when you can get frostbite or hypothermia. 10 is the current temperature on the east side, 7 in Metro Airport, 4 in Ann Arbor, 6 in Pontiac, but wind chills are still below zero. In fact, right now it feels like it's 14 below in Ann Arbor, 10 below at the airport, 8 below in Pontiac, uh, 3 above in Port Huron. And the reason why is the influence of the lake. The lake waters are actually warmer, so that's helping out keeping their temp above uh, zero right now. Light snow overnight tonight. Tough to get any accumulation when it's this cold, so there could be a dusting at best. Wind chills remain below zero through Wednesday, and then more snow ahead for Thursday and Friday, and we'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes. Kemp, so these bitter temperatures are forcing dozens of schools across Metro Detroit to close, including Ferndale schools and DPSCD. The more closures are rolling in minute by minute. Track it all at the top of clickondetroit.com. Speaking of closures, the northbound lanes of the Southfield Freeway shut down right now because of this. This water main break at Plymouth Road, you see the mess from Sky 4. Apparently a driver knocked over a fire hydrant, causing water to spew from the ground, completely flooding the service drive, also the nearby Sitgo gas station. Uh, we take a live look now from the ground, though Detroit Water and Sewage Department has crews on the scene shutting off the water. Boy, talking about cold work. Uh, again, Southfield freeway closed, in fact, in both directions at Plymouth Road. So if, you, if that is part of your usual afternoon commute or evening commute plans, you will want to make uh, a new plan. Uh, but right uh, we will let you know as soon as that freeway is back open. But it is a cold mess at the moment. Yeah, speaking of mess, people all across Metro Detroit are dealing with some big headaches because of the ice and snow. Let's check in with our Sean Lay, who found some people literally frozen out of their cars. Sean? Karen, I found the most unlucky street in the city today. This one here, I'll show you exactly what it is. Down there was a fire all the way down on the corner down there. Two fires, as a matter of fact. Detroit firefighters there all morning long in these temperatures fighting the fire. Well, a lot of that water came from fighting the fire, came all the way down here to the end of the block. This ice here is solid, thick, solid, locking two or three cars in like this. People woke up to this absolutely frigid surprise. Hold on, let me see if I can get it fired. Yeah. A shivering surprise for Terrence Taylor on Detroit's west side today. Yeah, that's crazy. It ain't going nowhere. His car is trapped, ice surrounding his tires. His mom's vehicle is also locked in ice. But there isn't a water main break here on Martindale. This is ridiculous. It's unlucky. Yes, this is ridiculous. No water main break, but from all from the water. All the water that drained from down the street, and it was on the other end, like on the corner down there. A block away, there was a lot of water. You can see why. For hours early this morning, Detroit firefighters were battling two vacant homes that were burning here. 
fighting those fires in the bitter early morning cold. So much water from battling the blazes flowing down the street and turning into seven to eight inches of ice. And so what's the plan to get this car out? Sort it. I'm going to just pull ridiculous salt all around. While Taylor deals with ice, all of us are dealing with this cold. Many stopping to say it's a serious struggle. And we try so hard, man. What's your plan to stay warm today? It's really cold. It's really, really cold out here. I think people need to make sure that gas tanks and they, and they fuel is everything going, man, because it's one of the tough days in the city. Great way to put a tough day in the city, especially for Taylor and the others out here on this street on Martindale. He did put a ridiculous amount of salt around each tire. It started to do the, uh, started to make some difference there, but the ice out here is very thick. These cars are not moving, and we listened to Kim very closely, guys. In forewarned weather, there's not going to be a warm up for a day, day and a half, maybe even longer. Back to you. And this cold, just really nothing to play with here. There are warming centers open in Detroit if you need them. Cass Community Social Services, uh, Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries, and Joseph Walker Williams Recreation Center, all of them open through March 31st. So not just for this cold snap. They can give you two meals, uh, showers, sleeping accommodations if need be. Detroit Recreation Centers and the Public Library are also open. You might want to make note of all of that. And we've got a list of warming centers for each each Metro Detroit County uh, on the home page right now at clickondetroit.com. And by the way, if you do see or hear about weather related problems from power outages, road issues or something else going on in your neighborhood, we definitely want to hear from you. So send us that information to our help desk by visiting help.clickondetroit.com. Well, we are all, however, being warmed by the uncharted territory that we are in right now. The best way to describe uh, this phase of the football season for a lot of Lions fans. Yeah, last night's win over Rams gave Detroit its first playoff win since 1991 when the Lions last advanced to the divisional championship. In case you're wondering, what was that year like? Brian Adams' song, I Do It For You, was the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 list. Uh, Cheers was the number one show. Wow. On, uh, that was a television long time ago. And, yeah, it was the number one show on NBC. Kevin Costner won the Oscar for uh, with Dances with Wolves, which won for Best Picture. You could also get a pound of bacon, a gallon of milk, and a dozen eggs for under six bucks. It's a long time ago. Yeah, we're moving on now. We Kelly. are, but enough about the past. Let's use this <laughs> live look over Ford Field as inspiration to focus on what's next for the Detroit Lions. All right, Bernie's here now with uh, how head coach Dan Campbell is kicking off uh, this week I in advance of another home playoff yeah. game. Well, I've, uh, first of all, they, they, they've been through this before, but it was in 1957, <laughs> so let's remember that. It was fair no enough. Super Bowl, but fair <laughs> enough. Apparently, this winning thing is something the Lions enjoy. Detroit will face the winner of the Eagles-Bucks game tonight in Tampa. But first, how about last night at Ford Field? We've got highlights. Lions win their first playoff game since 1993. Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford visited when it was over. Lions win it, move on to the divisional round. A short time ago, Campbell, Campbell said he knows where this team is and wants to take full advantage of it. I just know the opportunity we've got here. And so I, I don't, I can't, I can't quite go there, if that makes sense. Believe me, I'm excited. Don't, do, don't think for a minute I'm not. Um, but I just know we got an opportunity here, and uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm on my, I'm on it. You know, he's so he's he's like uh, Mr. Macho Man when he comes mm -hmm. out of that whole thing, and then he's got that cute little way about him with a, a heart. <laughs> he does. Yeah. 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 I love that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty it's emotional. So less, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can all keep getting caught up in all we this. Can. He needs to stay focused <laughs> on what's next. No, though. you do too, Coach. Oh, you know I do? That. Okay. Yeah. A little right. bit. Well, uh, so fans are already clamoring to get tickets for Sunday's game. Yeah, the price of getting into Ford Field is going to be steep. So consumer investigator Hank Winchester is out trying to find the best deals. Hey Hank, what'd you find? Yeah, Karen, Karen, we've been talking with the ticket experts. I mean, this game coming up, it is going to be pricey. Probably the priciest game we've ever had at Ford Field. Take a look. What are the most expensive seats we see right now online? About $3,800. Standing room only hovering just over $600. But if you're looking for a possible deal, here's what you need to know. Here we go again, Lions fans. Are you ready for more? The tickets being released right now, the prices, as you would imagine, astronomical. Kyle Zorn, a ticket insider with TickPick, says if you're looking for the best deal in town, 
you're gonna have to wait so right now it, it's pretty insane the ticket I, I if you're a fan looking to attend i would definitely wait to see how prices move throughout the week the least expensive ticket right now is 560 dollars uh, and that's the least expensive ticket. We hopped online and started looking for tickets for the game next weekend. Right now, standing room only, about $600. The average ticket price is about 1000 Make sure you buy from a verified seller like StubHub, Ticketmaster, or TickPick. Generally, what you see is as the week progresses, ticket prices tend to drop leading up to the game. Um, the one thing I would say is if you were looking to get the best deal is 24 to 48 hours is generally the best time in terms of ticket availability and pricing prices hitting their floor. Back out here live. Now, listen, here's the deal. Unfortunately, the scammers are going to be out there big time because they know this is such a hot ticket. So if you find yourself on a website like Craigslist, make sure that you're dealing with a verified seller. Do everything you can to get the actual ticket, have it scanned, make sure it is legit. Do not just give somebody money because they're offering you a good deal. Remember, nine times out of ten, if it sounds too good to be true, you're likely being set up for a big scam. So yeah. buyer beware. No We're live doubt. here tonight. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. Yeah. All right, Hank. We will continue to follow the ticket situation, of course, all through this weekend as we head into the weekend. Uh, there was a call to action at an ML Day, uh, MLK Day program in Detroit today. Yes. Yeah, speakers encouraging audience members to join in on the fight for justice. And as our Will Jones found out, they answered the call. Will. Kieran and Devin, organizers wanted those attendees, those people in the audience, to know what Dr. King was really about, what he was fighting for during his life, and how you and I can make a difference in the world as well. Community members gathering at St. Matthew's St. Joseph's Episcopal Church in Detroit to reflect on the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This is the 21st year for the MLK rally and march. We are committed uh, to the perpetuation of the actual legacy of Dr. King, uh, who was a struggler, uh, who came out of the depths of the uh, African American community in the South. Current events were not far from mind. There are people that are really trying to divide us with fear and with hatred. We have far more in common than any of us realize. Many speakers spoke out against the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. They also talked about the resurgence of organized labor, which Dr. King championed. And as I've said over and over, the civil rights movement and the labor movement are inextricably interconnected, intertwined, and uh, as one movement goes, so goes the other. So it's important that we all carry on the work of Dr. King. Organizers hope those in attendance left inspired by the works of King and will work to build upon his legacy. Especially on a day like today, we're remembering he had a dream, but it is not dead with him. We are still part of his dream, and we can take it beyond where it seems like it's going into nightmare. Take it back to the light. Due to the weather, organizers decided against having a march today. Instead, attendees after the service gathered for a warm meal and fellowship. We are live in Detroit. Will Jones, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Will.